a substance that enhances cognition and memory and facilitates learning. That is the definition of the word nootropic, which is the scientifically more accurate word to describe a smart drug. Well, I know for sure that if there is real smart drugs out there that I could take which would make my studying more effective, improve my memory, help me be able to focus for longer, I sure want to know what it is. We all know that exercise, a well-balanced diet and sleep will help you keep your mind sharp. But what else can you do to get that edge beyond everybody else and unlock your brain's full potential? I spent hours and days researching and found these five different smart drugs. Some of them are pretty much without side effects and some of them could actually really cause some harm and are highly addictive as well and also illegal without prescription. And I just want to clarify before we begin that there is no pill that's like NCT from the movie Limitless and you should always consult with a doctor before trying any new stuff that potentially could harm your health. But okay, let's jump into the first nootropic, which is actually a mix, and it's caffeine and L-theanine. Most of you are familiar with caffeine already. It is one of the world's most popular nootropics, and it's found in coffee, energy drinks, and small amounts in tea as well. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors in the brain, which are responsible for telling the brain that it's time for rest. This effect makes you feel alert and results in higher energy levels. And caffeine also increases dopamine in the brain, which makes you feel good and more motivated as well. Before proceeding to why you should have L-theanine mixed with your caffeine, we need to talk about the downsides of caffeine. Well, it decreases blood pressure, makes you feel a bit jittery, more stressed and nervous. And caffeine will actually increase a stress hormone called cortisol which doesn't make you feel too well and it also in many different studies have shown to reduce cognitive function, more specifically memory and learning. When you're trying to become smarter, you obviously don't want to increase cortisol, which makes your cognition and memory suffer. And that is why we have L-theanine in the mix. L-theanine is an amino acid found in tea and some mushrooms as well. And what it does is what I just said, it suppresses cortisol in the body, which makes your caffeine bus more clean without the impaired cognitive functions due to stress. L-theanine promotes a relaxing sensation but without any feelings of drowsiness. And it doesn't stop there because L-theanine also increases alpha brain waves, which occurs when in deep meditation or when you're very focused. And this makes your mind clearer and also improves your creativity. And that is why combining these two, L-theanine and caffeine, will give you the great energetic buzz from the caffeine, but also block out pretty much all the side effects with the L-theanine and even making it easier for you to direct your attention to one task and concentrate due to the increased alpha brain waves in your brain. And you will also not have to feel this higher anxiety and jitterness that caffeine often tend to make you feel. The recommended dosing for these two is two times the caffeine to the L-theanine. So let's say you drink two cups of strong coffee, that's about 200 milligrams of caffeine then aim for 100 milligrams of theanine. And this you will probably have to supplement in pill form, since you'd need about four to five cups of black tea to get to 100 milligrams. And I don't know about you, but I feel that that's a bit too many trips to the bathroom. And yeah, this is actually safe for most people, and it doesn't come with any side effects really worth mentioning. So all you need to do is just get on hand on some L-theanine capsules and then you can start doing this. Let's move on to number two and this is microdosing LSD. Well I don't know if you've heard about LSD but it's a very hallucinogenic drug that makes people euphoric as well as often making people see beyond their normal states of thinking and many people report that after a trip they know what matters in their life and what they should do etc etc so it's a very 
interesting drug. And something that has been popular in Silicon Valley for many years now, even so that the two biggest figures to come out of that area, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, have reportedly done it themselves, is to take a fairly small dose, a microdose, of LSD once every couple days for a limited time. Well, why do these highly successful people do this? A microdose of LSD consists about a tenth of a recreational dose, usually 10 to 20 micrograms. And this microdose is usually not potent enough to cause hallucinations. Instead, it is reported to heighten alertness, energy and creativity. Microdosing LSD also purportedly enhances overall well-being, helping to reduce stress and anxiety while improving sleep, which leads to pretty much easier to focus on your work if everything else feels better. As late as 2016, researchers from Imperial College London were the first to use brain scanning techniques to visualize how LSD alters the way the brain works. One key finding was that LSD had a disorganizing influence on cortical activity, which permitted the brain to operate in a freer, less constrained manner than usual. So LSD actually lets your brain make new types of connection, which basically helps you get out of your thought patterns and see problems in different ways, which should help you to come up with new solutions. Okay, number three is Bacopa Monieri. Ancient Indian texts talked about Bacopa. It was recommended to devotees to help memorize long passages of texts. Here in the West, Bacopa Monieri is often used to reduce anxiety, depression and stress. But it is gaining popularity in the nootropic community as a powerful memory and cognition booster. And it is well tested too. A 2012 review of six trials on Bacopa noted large and statistically significant memory enhancing effects in older adults. But it works on younger people too, making it a powerful nootropic. Bacopa affects brain levels of acetylcholine, which is important for memory and cognition. It has antioxidant effects as well, which enhances cognitive function. And Bacopa has a significant anxiolytic effect, which is an anti-anxiety effect, as it appears to modulate brain levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin. And this has an effect on mood regulation. And Bacopa is safe to use. Some people report that Bacopa makes them a bit more sluggish and less motivated. And this is due to the calming effects of the herb. But combining it with stimulants like caffeine should counter this effect and still give you the fantastic benefits of less anxiety combined with a better memory. Bacopa usually comes in capsule form. Just follow the instructions on the packaging for dosage. But however, uh, Bacopa Moniri's memory enhancing effects appear with long-term continuous use. So 8 weeks is a good minimum trial period, but most people say that they experience the enhanced memory sooner than that. Let's move on to number 4, which is Modafinil. This drug has been used and praised by many successful people, like Tim Ferriss, allegedly Barack Obama and Joe Rogan. It is reportedly used quite a lot in Silicon Valley as well and in other high-performing work environments like Wall Street. Modafinil is designed to keep you awake and is usually a prescription drug targeted for people with narcolepsy. Modafinil works by slowly binding to the dopamine receptor and triggering the release of dopamine into the cell. In doing so, it keeps you awake. Although modafinil works in other ways as well, the dopamine signaling pathway is the main contributor of its wakefulness promoting and focus enhancing effects. Modafinil's effects last longer and have fewer downsides than other dopamine boosting drugs like cocaine and even Adderall as well. 
The primary reason for this is that it binds less tightly to the dopamine transporter, causing a relatively slow release of dopamine into the cell. Modafinil therefore does not cause euphoria, at least not as much as drugs like Adderall, cocaine, amphetamine. But modafinil gives you this very long-lasting energy boost, which makes it easier to focus on a task for a long period of time. Many say that modafinil is the most effective smart drug that there is, because it increases energy a lot and keeps you energized for up to 12 hours. It has been described as being on a powerful caffeine bus without really any crash for many hours, and modafinil usually does not come with any remarkable crash at all. It more slowly leaves your body and has a half-life for about 12 hours, as I said earlier. Many people say that the effect of modafinil is perfect for staying focused on a task for a long time, like writing, coding, programming, studying, but also that it makes it harder to multitask and creativity might not be on top level. And although modafinil is said to not be quite as uh, dangerous or harmful as Adderall, it definitely comes with some side effects. Some Quite common ones are anxiety, headaches, nausea, nervousness, and also I found that allergic reactions are relatively common to modafinil, and they can be dangerous, and therefore you should always try a small dose before going the full way. And the last smart drug that I have is Adderall. I guess most of you guys guessed it. Because Adderall is basically the most well-known smart drug. Well, smart drug which people actually tend to look at as a smart drug. What it is, is that it is, it is a medication based off amphetamine and amphetamine salts. It is mainly prescribed for people with concentration disorders such as ADHD and ADD. Adderall stimulates your central nervous system, causing a fight or flight response, which makes your heart beat faster and your blood goes to the major organs, leaving your digestive system, which suppresses hunger. Adderall has become one of the more popular illicit study aids or party drugs, with almost 7.5% of high school seniors and one third of college undergraduates reportedly misusing the drug. Adderall is a stimulant that increases the concentration of dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain. It gives, much like modafinil, a big spike in energy and concentration, but also binds more tightly to the dopamine receptors, which makes the high you get from Adderall more euphoric, and that's why it's a lot more addictive than modafinil. It usually takes about 30 to 60 minutes for Adderall to kick in, and then it lasts many hours. The crash is also worse, usually you feel like shit the day after and you'll have to sleep for many hours before getting back to your normal state. Studies has been done on this drug and it's shown that Adderall is more beneficial if you're doing a more simple monotone task, that, that if you're doing creative work it can even do more harm than good actually. It just makes you able to concentrate on monotone difficult tasks for a long period of time without having to take breaks or even eat or you won't risk that you're losing interest. So we can see a similarity in both Adderall and Modafinil and it is that it will help you stay focused and more locked in on tasks for much longer but does not really improve any cognitive function. So nothing really proves that you will be smarter per se, but you will be able to concentrate for long, which will result in getting more work done. And that was it for today, so don't do anything stupid, and like I said, always consult with a trained physician before trying any of these, uh, or may maybe not caffeine, L-theanine and Bacopa, that should you should be fine. But the other three comes with serious side effects so i don't recommend anyone trying and that was all for this video please like subscribe and all that good stuff goodbye